Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored? This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Because we have a choice. Turn to your neighbor and say, you got a choice. Glory. You know, what a time and season we are in right now. I love it. It's an opportunity to be alive in this time. Amen? You know that God predestined us to be alive at this time for a specific purpose, for a call to fulfill, for a destiny to fulfill. Amen? Things are definitely happening. Would you turn to the Gospel of John for a moment? Oh, yes. In chapter 6, John 6. So Lord, grant us revelation and impartation so that we may reload our armor, our weapons, our Holy Ghost bazookas to kick butt on the devil in Jesus' name. You know, the, the word of the Lord that came to us for 2020 was mighty powerful. And uh, you can go to Eternal Library and it's under a newsletter. But we also have sheets, copies of them, which Viv has. You can get them from her. Uh, and I want you to know that it's amazing to me and how awesome the Lord is in the area to where immediately after the word was given, I, I began to see things happen and confirmation came of all kinds of things. People have no idea what's really going on. One of the things that was spoken about in the word was about the evil, the word evil being a reality to people. They're about to find out how evil evil is. They have no idea that what's been going on for centuries. Centuries. Tunnels, cities, up to 80 miles deep, 22 miles deep. When the word in the, in, in the prophetic word that was given for 2020, it said, uh, don't be alarmed about the storms that would come, the coastlines and the, and the fires that would come inland. He said, don't be uh, worried about that. He said, those are my storms. And when I began to realize after what he was talking about and getting confirmation on things, and my wife had found some things and sent them to me, What's happening in these areas that are called DAMA, deep underground military bases that have been established for centuries. And again, some of them are 80 feet deep, some 20, or 80 miles deep, some 20. They have uh, transportation, they have everything. It's been going on for centuries. And a lot of this is all, most of it is backed by Satan's kingdom. This is where they abduct children and they bring them. In fact, they just rescued 35,000 children that were caged. 35,000 children that were getting ready to go under mind control so that they would be released at a later age and become triggers so that they could do their bidding. That's what you see a lot of the stuff that's happening right now and a lot of the shootings that are going on. These kids or whomever they are just get triggered because they've been under satanic control and don't even know it. But I encourage you to read that 2020 uh, prophetic word because what's happening is God is setting us on a platform for the body of Christ. This is our year. I want you to know. This is the year of the kingdom to be established more and more and more. They are actually blowing up these facilities underground. That's why you're hearing about all of these fires. Now you just heard about more fires in Australia. You're hearing about fires here. And I mean, they got videos of, of uh, sewages, uh, sewage outlets 
where you see fire going through them and everything. That's where people have been hearing all these big booms and whatever. Why? Because the king of glory is sending his military to destroy these bases. Earthquakes. Many, many earthquakes. Why would it say that there would be many, many earthquakes? Because these facilities would be blowing. I'm telling you, we are in a time of war like never before. It is phenomenal. And we're in it. And that's why it's so important to pray the prayer booklet in warfare. Calling destructive fire down in these areas. And there are places that are not only on earth, but off earth. There are other facilities. You know, greatest, the greatest weapon of Satan's kingdom is to keep us deceived and blinded from what the truth is. Amen? So I encourage you to grab hold of it. Viv has one. Get it, read it, understand it. And prepare. Amen? John 6, 26. Let's speak it together. Jesus answered him and said, Most assuredly I say to you, seek me. You seek me not because you saw the signs. Is everybody there? But because you ate of the loaves and were what? And filled. You ate of the loaves and were what? Filled. It was about food. Do not labor for food, he says, which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you because God the Father has sent, has set his seal on him. So he's talking about food, but he's not talking about physical food. He's talking about a spiritual food. And then they said to him, what shall we do? Uh, that we may work the works of God. And Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God that you believe in him who what? Who sent him. Therefore they said to him, what sign will you perform then that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert and as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus answered and said to Moses, surely I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven. But my father gives you the true bread of life. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Now, this is so powerful. And, and in this, see, the Old Testament was a shadow of things to come. So Jesus was using the Old Testament. And he was talking about the manna that was fed to the Jews when they were in the wilderness, the Hebrews. But Jesus would become the true bread that would come down from heaven to feed the world. So it wouldn't just be for the Jews, and now before everyone and anyone that was willing to come to him, they would no longer hunger, and those who would follow him or believe means follow, they would no longer thirst. So there's two different things. Comes to me will not hunger and follows me will not thirst. In other words, he's talking about worldly, ungodly appetites. We will no longer thirst and hunger for ungodly appetites. And one of the, today we're going to just talk a little bit about a godly appetite. How many of y'all know what you eat, you become? What you speak is what you eat. And what you eat is what you become. And Matthew chapter 5. Godly appetites. In verse 6, Matthew 5, verse 6, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for what? Righteousness this is an appetite for righteousness. He said, They will be what? Filled. So there's a level where you and I must maintain. 
And we talked about some of this yesterday about maintaining a thirst and hunger all the time. But that means maintaining an appetite. We must begin to change our appetites so that it's a godly appetite, not a worldly appetite, and not a selfish appetite. Amen? Not a temporary appetite, but an eternal appetite. And those who thirst and hunger for righteousness, we know righteousness is a godly appetite. Amen? Shall be what? Filled. Mark 4. Mark chapter 4. In verse 1. I'm sorry, that's Matthew 4. Sorry. Sometimes I can't read my own writing. <laughs> Matthew 4. Oh, it's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. Again, if you turn them fast enough, you can fan your neighbor. Verse 1, then Jesus was led by the Spirit. He had to be filled with the Spirit first, right? Into the wilderness to be what? Tempted by who? The devil. This was his battle. He was battling for all mankind. He had to go after the one that had control over everything. And when he had fasted 40 days and nights afterward, he was hungry. How many of y'all know when the devil knows when you're hungry? No. <laughs> we have a saying it's about first thoughts, you know. <laughs> Be careful that first thought. Verse 3. Now when the tempter came to him, he said to him, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. You got to remember now, Jesus was hungry. But there's something that he did to overcome. He did not take any, feed himself with anything of worldliness. Everything he was being fed with was by the Spirit now. So he was maintaining a spiritual appetite or what you may call a godly appetite because without a godly appetite, you can't overcome the powers of darkness. So here we know that the tempter came, and the first thing he tried to do is tempt him by his identity. Because, see, when people seem to go through struggles, the first thing they begin to compromise is their identity, because it's the first thing the devil comes to steal, who you are. See, most of you are too involved in, I'm hungry. Jesus wasn't concerned about hunger. It was a difference. He wasn't going to let the worldly appetite interfere and take his identity. He was going to maintain his identity by maintaining food from heaven. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah. Now when the tempter had come to him and he said, if you are the son of God, command that these stones become what? Bread. And Jesus answered him and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he was explaining us, look, there's two types of appetite. There's a worldly one. There's actually three. There's an evil one. Amen. There's one that sustains your body. And there's an eternal one called a godly one. That's why the word says, seek him every morning. Seek him first. See, most people run to the breakfast before prayer. They feed themselves with, they, they physically support themselves instead of spiritually support themselves. That's reverse. And it's not in order. And we need to start getting our mornings in divine order. Because once you make contact, you'll find that your appetite changes. Is everybody okay? And Psalm 141. 
See, people eat food for taste many times because they like what it tastes like, not realizing whether it's good or bad for them. Amen? It's the same thing in the spirit realm. There are things that the enemy likes to release to us. That's what's lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. Those are appetites. Fuel. So we eat food for fuel, but we need to have fuel from heaven. Just keep our inner man strengthened. Amen? And Psalm 141. <clears throat> In verse 1, let's speak it together. Why? Because you're sowing, right? You're sowing in the Spirit. What you're speaking is eating. You speak light, you eat light. Lord, I cry out to you. Make haste to me. Give ear to my voice when I cry out to you. Let my prayer be set before you as an incense. The lifting of my hands is an evening sacrifice. Set a guard, O Lord, over my what? my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Do not incline my heart to any evil thing to practice wicked works with men who work iniquity. Do not let me eat of their what? Delicacies. Hmm? Let the righteous strike me. It shall be a kindness. Let him rebuke me. It shall be an excellent oil. Let my head not refuse it, for still my prayers against the deeds of the Wicked. So he explains her that there are wicked delicacies. Sometimes I look at pastries as wicked delicacies. <laughs> Sugar is a wicked delicacy. <laughs> so what the, the, what the, the enemy is always trying to get you to agree with a delicacy to create an appetite. Does everybody get it? Always. You, you look at, we were born in a war. We have a constant battle all the time. You can have to battle your old man that you sleep with. And I don't mean your ex-husband or your husband or whatever. I'm talking about your old man, the carnal nature, who always wants, yeah, that's what you hear about me, 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 that's him. And then you have your new creation in Christ that wants things from above. Always. How many of y'all know what you starve is what you're weak? Or you'll weaken it. Whatever you starve, you will weaken. Whatever you feed, you will strengthen. It's James chapter 4. So again, we are in such a time and season right now where imposters are, evil wickedness is increasing. Demons are rampant. We need to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, and that cannot be established unless we maintain a level of being filled with the Spirit, a level of being in the area of feeding our spirit man so strong to overcome everything. Too many people have gone weak. James chapter 4 and verse 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your what? Desires. Can a desire be an appetite? Yeah. For pleasure that war in your members. You lust and do not have. You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not what? Ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your own ungodly appetite. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who dwells in us yearns jealousy, but he gives more grace. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Grace is the plan of escape. It doesn't give you a right to do whatever you feel like doing. 
Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll what? Flee from you, draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will what? He will lift you up. So it's vital that we maintain a godly appetite in everything that we're doing. We must be able to resist those temptations of demonic delicacies. How many of you know sin is a demonic delicacy? Amen? How about lust of the eye? Lust of the flesh? Pride of life? How about selfish ambitions? All of these things are associated with an ungodly appetite. Psalm 23. Psalm 23 and verse 1. Jesus was the perfect example of everything. Of everything. Is everybody there? Psalm 23, verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. What do you do at a table? Hello. You anoint my head with oil and my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall what? Follow me all the days of my life. Wow. All the days of my life. In John chapter 6. We call Satan's food deceptive food. <laughs> John chapter 6. How many of you know you can be partaking of deceptive food by what you hear? How about music? How about movies? Hmm. John 6. And verse 53. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Then Jesus said, And most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood is eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Now, did he mean physically? No. My flesh is food indeed. What's his flesh? The Word. The Word became flesh. My blood is drink. What's his blood? The Spirit. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds on me will what? Live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna and are what? Dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. Wow. So we see that the flesh is the word, the blood, is the drink. Now, the, the word brings light. Amen? And the spirit brings life. The word brings light, and the spirit brings life. Second Peter chapter 1. Properties. The Word and the Spirit. One brings light, one brings life. Without those, you can't overcome. Second Peter chapter 1. Godly appetite. You know, one of the things that people don't realize is that their associations bring in partitions. 
And their associations will be releasing an ungodly appetite if they're associating with people that are not faithful and filled with the Spirit. Flesh book is a ungodly appetite. <laughs> That's why it's called flesh book. But you can turn it around, amen, and release things on flesh book to become spirit book. <laughs> and verse 2. Let's speak it. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Is the knowledge of God food? Yes. That's why he says increase in knowledge. Why? Then you got to increase in the thirst and hunger. You know how many people don't read their Bible? Many. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may par be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust or deceptive appetites. Does everybody get it? Again, it's the arena where people lose sight again of what they speak, what they eat, what they hear. You and I must reject every ungodly appetite. That's what temptation is, just trying to get you to agree to eat it. Amen? But also for this very reason, verse 5, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? You won't stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we see the knowledge of God is divine food. Amen? It's divine what? Food. We must maintain a godly appetite to overcome. In Psalm 37. Psalm 37. In verse 1. Everybody there? How many of you know a doctor can feed you deceptive food? How about the media? Man. How about schools? They can all feed you deceptive. In fact, there's deceptive foods in every single location. But it's our responsibility to reject deceptive food and accept the food of Christ, the truth food. Verse 1, let's speak. Do not fret because of evildoers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and where there is a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good, Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Rest in the Lord. Wait patiently for him. And do not fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger and forsake wrath, and do not fret. It only does what? It causes what? 
harm. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait on the Lord shall inherit the earth. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. Indeed, you will look carefully for his place, but it shall be no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. We need to feed on his faithfulness. In other words, we need to trust. You know, so many times people want to understand everything. It's not a place of understanding everything. It's a place of trusting him. Amen? If you'll trust him in everything, you don't have to understand everything. When he wants you to understand something, he will release it to you. Proverbs 13. Proverbs 13. Godly appetite. You know, one of the things that people don't realize sometimes is you know, the demonic forces from the beginning haven't changed. I mean, their strategies are still the same. They haven't changed. They've just taken more positions. They've infiltrated more places. They've taken possession of more people. There's all kinds of things that are going on. And it's your responsibility and my responsibility to not only expose them, but, but destroy their Endeavors in their agendas. They are regimes of corruption and destruction. And their purpose is to destroy as much as they can. And start their own new race. It's been going on. That's why you hear about abductions and everything else. There's hybrids and so forth. I'm telling you, you're about to see a lot of stuff happen in this coming year. A lot of things are going to be exposed like never before. People are going to realize the evilness and wickedness of what's been going on for centuries. Proverbs 13, verse 1. It says, A wise son heeds his father's instruction, but a scoffer does not listen to rebuke. A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, because what you speak is what you eat. But the soul of the unfaithful feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his what? His life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have what? Destruction. So there's a fruit of your mouth. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. That doesn't change. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Matthew 12. Why is God giving us this? I believe that there's a lot of demonic bakeries going on right now. They're coming out all pretty and everything, all, you know. Smells good. How many of you know demon, demonic forces can even smell good because they perfume themselves? <laughs> this is reality. You're not fighting flesh and blood. So you cannot be swayed physically. You can't be deceived in that arena. There's a lot of lies and deception that's going out there that is saying this is good for you. And it really isn't. I mean, think about all the things. That, I mean, if really they cared about us so much, would they have ever proven cigarettes? No. I mean, they test everything afterwards, right? We become the guinea pigs. Oh, that's no good. After they just made a trillion dollars off us and they got sued for a couple of hundred million. Remember, the ruler of this world is Satan. And he rules it by deception and fear. He has captured every corner of the globe. All positions. But right now, God is driving them out. Remember, he's changing the atmosphere now. 2020 is an atmosphere change. You're going to find out many politicians are not getting back in position. People are awakening. That's what the Great Awakening is about. What's, what's the Great Awakening? People see an evil. Listen, you don't know what righteousness is until you finally see evil. 
Amen? Matthew 12, are we there? Good, I'll be right there. Okay, verse 33. He says, either make the tree good and its fruits good, or else make the tree bad and its fruits bad. For a tree is known by its fruits. What's a tree represent? A spirit, a human. Or a spirit, you know. Bro of vipers. How can you be an evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be what? You will be condemned. By your words, you'll be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. It's all being recorded. Oh, hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy 2. See, one of the things about the heart, the heart receives. This is where it conceives things. The mind reflects and the mouth speaks. That is the order of it. When people speak all the time, it's because the heart, they're coming out, they're living out of the mind. There's a difference. You live out of the spirit, it's different than living out of the mind. Amen? That's why God is raising up headless warriors. Because they don't live out of the mind, they live out of the heart, out of, which means out of the spirit. So the heart conceives, receives, that's your inner man, your spirit. And the mind reflects off of it, but it wants to line up with it. So if it's not being fed through the word, it can't align up with what God is saying. Does everybody get it? And it will begin to negate it. Then the mouth speaks it so. If there's not a connection in that area, the mouth will always speak what they think. Did you ever get around someone that speaks everything they think? They drive you crazy. That's their purpose. See, you didn't think they had a purpose. They do. They drive you crazy. Hallelujah. 2 Timothy 3. <laughs> oh, happy days. And we'll start at verse 1. Everybody okay? Godly appetite. In verse 1, let's speak it. But know that this, that in the what? Last days. Are we in the last days? Perilous times will come. Are perilous times coming? Man, you see it all over the place. But this is where he's really expressing now. Watch this. He says, for men will become lovers of themselves. What's lovers of themselves? That's called an appetite. When somebody says, I love someone, they appetite. I love that food. I love that car. What do you want? You desire it. Amen. These are lovers of themselves. Because they have an appetite of self. Lovers of money. What does the word say about lovers of money? What a love of money is, every root of evil is there. Every root of evil. Why? Because they have an appetite for money. They live for money. This is where you and I got to come out of living for the things of the world. Why? Because you're feeding yourself with, because of the appetites of the worldliness. You won't desire these things if you're not feeding yourself with them. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving. Whoa. 
for unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. In other words, they have an appetite for ungodliness instead of godliness. Having a form of godliness, oh, they're good pretenders. But denying its power. See, there's a lot of people that want to be religious. See, there's so many people that don't understand. They're, it's not about religion. God never came to bring a religion. Amen? He, became, he came to bring a relationship and establish an army. Having a form of godliness and denying its power and from such people do what? Turn away. Why? Because they're carrying a what? Ungodly appetite. For this are sort of those who creep into households and make captives of gullible women and men, loaded down with sins and led away with various lusts. Those are all appetites. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The knowledge of the truth is a godly appetite. They can never reach it because all the other appetites are overtaking it. They can never reach that place. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I mean, there's so many diets out there, it's incredible. And they offer all kinds of ways to lose weight, don't they? But so many people want to try to lose weight without changing their diet. It's like an alcoholic that's trying to stop drinking, so he goes out and buys non-alcoholic beer that has 1% in it. It's still alcohol. You're not going to stop. It's plum dumb. Hallelujah. That's deceptive food. It's ungodly appetites. Lovers of deceptive food is what happens. People become lovers of deceptive food. So they're actually strengthening their flesh, puffing up their soul, and weakening their spirit, man. And they wonder why they have problems. They wonder why they're easily moved. Do you wonder why they're somebody who's easily offended? Hello? Why? Because the spirit man's not strong at all. They're weak. That's why the word says, be strong in the Lord. Matthew 16. And the power of his might. Godly appetite. Is it because of their ungodly appetites? You know, most things can be cured by just changing the diet. Why? Because the body is self-healing. If you fuel it correctly, you'll get healed. Why do you think everybody runs the chicken soup when they got a bug, a flu? You know, it's the first thing people, man, I, got, I feel like garbage, man. Chicken soup. It's good for you. It helps. It may even comfort you a little bit, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But if you prepare yourself every day and load yourself up with enough nutrition and vitamins and everything you can combat, make everything quick. Doesn't mean you won't touch something or shake somebody's hand. People get offended sometimes. They're over there sneezing and whatever, and they come up to me afterwards and say, hey, how you doing? I ain't touching you, man. I love you from here. I got enough battle spiritually. I don't need to have more battle physically. <laughs> Hallelujah. I had one guy sneezing like crazy sitting in the front seat one day. And he was, and he came up to shake my hand and said, no offense. He said, well, I wash my hands. I said, I don't care if you wash your hands or not. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, it's still touching something unclean. Does everybody get it? 
Don't touch nothing unclean. Don't make no way for the devil. Hallelujah. Matthew 16, verse something. Five. Now when his disciples had come to him to the other side, they had forgotten to take bread. Then Jesus said, him, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, It is because we had <laughs> taken no bread? But Jesus, being aware of it, said to them, Oh, you little faith. He was so kind to them. You know, <laughs> thank God I wasn't in that position. <laughs> you moron. No. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> oh, you little faith, why do you reason among yourselves? Because you have brought no bread. Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the 5,000 and how many baskets you took up? nor the seven loaves of the 4,000 and how many large baskets you took up. How is it that you don't understand that I did not speak to you concerning physical bread? But beware of the leaven. Leaven here means evil. Of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Why? Their delicacy was ungodly. Then they understood that he did not tell them to beware of the leaven of the bread, but the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. <laughs> Does everybody get it? You know, you know, let me share something. Jesus had, when they, were, when they were in the wilderness, Jesus had them fast three times a year. What, he had them fast from leaven. Now this leaven was called yeast. Why? Because yeast is the number one immune eater. It's in breads. It's in all kinds, you know. Well, look at all the white flowers. Jesus had them fast three times a year. He said, do not come into the camp, clean out everything, clean out your homes, which was associated with a fungus. Amen. Clean out everything. And don't drink anything fermented because it will promote it. You know, they've taken a test of individuals that are in their mental institutions. And their least yeast level is phenomenally high because it messes with. When Jesus said to them, don't put any leaven in your bread because you're going to need to move quickly when we move out of here. Amen. When he was taking them out of Egypt. Why? Because he didn't want it to mess with his, their quickness. Why? Because it dumbs people down. If it's going to eat your immune system, so you must be careful on how much yeast you take in. Does pastries have yeast? Does bread have yeast? Look at all the things that yeast of, you know, they're, they're yeasted. They're all over the place. It bloats people, everything up, you know. I nearly died of it. That's how I found out about it before I even got saved. Because I lived on cocaine and scotch. That was my diet. Sure wasn't godly. I ate to, to live when I could. But I lived for the dope. And I got very ill. I was blacking out and stuff. Even when I wasn't using and I finally went to go see. I didn't like doctors then either. But I went and saw a nutritionist, and his son had written a software to test people's level of yeast. And he came over and looked at me and kind of like said, you're still alive. We got your test back. You shouldn't be alive, he said. Your yeast level's off the chart. And they put me on this medication that you'd put under your drops under your tongue. And you can feel the yeast popping in your body, even in your thoughts. I mean, in your, you can hear it poof, 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 in your body. Of course, the side effects of the medication was a little tough, but I didn't care then. I'm telling you, I crawled on my hands and knees for days. I couldn't go nowhere as I was detoxing from this stuff, from yeast. Anybody ever hear of Candidas? It's not a song. It's a fungus.
it's a killer. But because people are eating ungodly appetites, they have un they're eating things that are destroying them, nullifying their thinking, dumbing them up. So people are getting dumbed up physically, but the devil's dumbing up people spiritually. We got a battle on our hands. But thank God he using us is greater than he is in the world. That we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. That we're more than a conquerors. And if he be for us, who can be against us? And that we're a new creation in Christ. All things pass away and all things become new. Now I'm speaking light. I'm eating light. I'm cutting loose. Well, let's get a little more cut loose. Glory. Is everybody okay? Did we finish this yet? Sounds good. Next one. 1 Timothy 4. So the Pharisees and Hadjusees. <laughs> they had a doctrine of demons. Their leaven was deceptive. First Timothy chapter four. Oh, happy days. Aren't you glad we're not religious? Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Verse 1. Now the Spirit expressly says. I think he's trying to get our attention if he says expressly. You know, you might feel a little slap in the back of the head. Hello. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter times, are we in the latter times? Some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons known as deceptive food. Amen? Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their own what? Conscience, conscience seared. That means severed. That means they are not able to receive conviction. With a hot iron. Forbidding to marrying and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. Doctrines of demons and seducing spirits. It's called deceptive food. There's a lot of doctrines of demons all over the place, man. Second John. Second John. Oh, happy days. Everybody there? Glory. I think that's where we're supposed to be. Let's start at something. Verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and a what? Antichrist. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things which we worked for, but that we may receive a what? Full reward, not a partial. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the what? Doctrine of Christ, which is godly food, does not have God. Why? Because he can't maintain or they never started eating from the godly food from the beginning. Again, there's a lot of people say they're very spiritual. I run across a lot of people, yeah, my mother's very spiritual. Or my mother's very religious. You know what I say? Bummer. <laughs> Although they probably don't know the terminology, you know. They just know religion and spiritual. But they could be home doing Ouija boards, you know doing spells or seances, and they call them spiritual because they don't know the difference. Even mediums and sorcerers and witches think they're spiritual. Amen? But they're not. They're spiritual in one sense in a demonic arena, but they're feeding deceptive food. They're eating deceptive, and they're giving it to others. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. That's simple enough. That's it. They don't have the true God. So there's no other belief system 
that's approved by the Creator. Amen? He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. And if anyone comes to you and doesn't bring this doctrine, don't receive him into your house or greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. Why? Doctrines. Any other doctrine except for the doctrine of Christ is deceptive food. Psalm 43. Psalm 43. You know, the word says, I was afflicted when I went astray. You know, there are things that our forefathers also did that came, come down the family line because of eating deceptive food. Addictions and so forth and whatever, all eating deceptive food come down the family line to the children. Until it's broke, it will continue down every generation and every family line. And it's broke by the mouth. That's why we have the sword of the Spirit. We repent for those sins. And look, at anytime you make a mistake, you make sure it's under the blood. Is everybody there? Verse 1. Vindicate me. Anybody want vindication? Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against the ungodly nation. O deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off, and why do I go mourning? Because of what? The oppression of my enemy. That's the voice of the stranger. O send out your what? Light and your truth. What's he asking for? Godly food. Send out your light and your truth so they can what? Lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your what? Tabernacle. How many of you know that the tabernacle of God is sacred to God? It wasn't the tabernacle itself. Amen. It was symbolic, but it was the gathering. He met his people in the sanctuary. That's why he says forsake not to assemble. This is just a building until the God, people of God come in. Then it becomes a sanctuary. Amen? But he's saying, feed me from this. Give me your light and truth. Give me spiritual food that it can lead me and bring me to the sanctuary, the tabernacle, to your presence. Then I will go to the altar of God and to God my exceeding joy. And on the harp I will praise you, O God. My God, why are you cast down, O my soul? In other words, why am I oppressed? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So light and truth will bring you to his presence. Amen. See, everything in this word should always bring a desire, a thirst, and hunger, which is an appetite, to the presence of God. If it's really taken to heart, if it's taken to mind, there won't be a desire for God's presence. Only if it's taken to heart. Why? Because in his presence is everything. It's where you and I came from. It's what we should desire and have an appetite. But see, the enemy will bring deceptive food in. That's what drugs and alcohol and all the other false fulfillment, self-fulfilling things are out there. What are they? They're just... This deceptive food that has a false presence of God. Because it's not the presence of God. It's a temporary fulfillment, but not the true fulfillment. And I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 2. Because we need to be reminded because so much is going to be unleashed. You know, what does the word say? People get itchy ears. And they'll go try and find a doctrine that's pleasing to them the way they feel. Yeah. 
it's pretty sad right now. So people are supposedly living out of the Bible, but they can't be living out of the Bible, or there wouldn't be any, be any sexual perverse individual behind the pulpit. Amen? I mean, now you've got lesbians and gays and so forth, which are nothing but demonized. Amen? These are demons and people. Unfortunately, they're maybe, they don't know. They just think they were born this way. But you know what? They weren't born that way. They turned that way. Amen? They turned that way because something came in. But now you've got all of these religious organizations splitting up. Why? Because they're now allowing same-sex marriage, promoting same-sex marriage. Amen? And allowing them to preach in their churches. Yes, they're all humans. Amen? We all carry the same blood, regardless of where we came from, nationality. We all carry blood because it originated when God created Adam and Eve. But he did not create Adam and Steve. Amen? So in this, this is where you and I got to be careful. We love everyone, but we hate evil. We're not to pet it, cooperate with it, or associate with it, especially promote it. Again, it still baffles me how many people call themselves Christians and vote for individuals and put them in office that promote abortion and sexual perversion. It's just baffling to me. You know why? They don't eat godly food because they don't have a godly appetite. They eat deceptive food, and they have an ungodly appetite. And this is where you and I must be careful not to associate. We be a witness, but that's it. Listen, anybody who's a friend of yours is your enemy. In the kingdom of God, we have no friends. We have brothers and sisters. Amen? Not that they can't turn either. But if they stay connected, you'll overcome. I mean, you know, emotional idols is a killer. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together, please. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Do not what? Do not what? Love the world. What does that mean? Don't have an appetite for the world. Or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, which is a what? Ungodly appetite, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Little children, is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they may be made manifest, that none of them were of us. Why? Because they began to partake of deceptive food. But you have an anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. So we don't have an excuse. We have a choice to make. Amen. Not an excuse. So, Father, we just thank you for your word. We're honored and blessed. We ask that you keep us thirsty and hunger. Maintain a godly appetite in each and every one of us as you prepare us for the days ahead. And we take this opportunity and we repent for anything that we've done that's offended you and prepare our hearts for communion. In Jesus' mighty name.